Center. But right now we want to introduce you to a very special guest who is in the Metro. We're talking craft brew author and journalist. Yes, that is a very exciting <laughs> job you can have. And that's one that John Hall has. Yeah, it's a real job. It, it is a real yeah. job. Yeah. Yeah, what a great business card that has to be. <laughs> Just to hand that out. The number one question I get is, can I have your job? And yeah. I say, you know, no, because I'm really enjoying this. You know, But uh, the one thing that I will say is that covering beer and writing about beer, the mornings are really difficult. I would imagine. And so being here at 7 a.m. is really, like my commitment to you guys is real you're, after, you're after a late night. You're a good man. Night. Yeah, because you had an event last night here yeah, in the Metro. At Peace Tree, yeah, yeah. We were talking about the new book. And uh, yeah, it's uh, my first time in this general area of the country and just uh, visited a whole bunch of breweries yesterday with the head of the Iowa Brewers Guild and uh, got to taste a lot of really great beers. I mean, there's a lot of really cool things that's happening uh, locally with beer, but also nationally as right. well. And so you can sort of distill, distill it down into the local. Uh, you you yeah. mentioned your book. I want you to tell us a little bit because about Because you're book. from the East Coast. Are you on a book tour right now, or are you really drawn to areas where you're seeing <laughs> craft brew really thrive right now? Uh, it's, it's both. Um, so the new book is out. It's called Drink Beer, Think Beer, Getting to the Bottom of Every Pint. And it's really about uh, what happens outside of the glass. And so, you know, we think a lot of the time of just the four main ingredients of beer, of water, malt, hops, and yeast. And we think about their various flavors and how it's processed and how it's made. Um, but there's so much that happens outside of the beer glass itself. It's, you know, friendships are formed and the way that beers are are served to you and the way uh, that ingredients uh, are actually grown uh, before they make it into the beer, the way that the beer is marketed to you, um, and even some of the negative sides of beer, you know, some of the, the adverse uh, uh, health effects if you mm -hmm. imbibe too much and some of the other problems that can come with that. So I sort of talk about all of that in this book uh, and sort of give people uh, hopefully a kaleidoscopic view of beer in general, of appreciating what's happening in the uh, what's happening around the glass while you're enjoying a fun beer. Now while you're traveling wow. across the country, can you see the different uh, styles of beer and the way they're created? from the East Coast as, as for comparison to right here in the middle of the country? Yeah, well, not so much. You know, beer is sort of universal these days. And, and while styles, like the New England style IPA, which is this hazy one that, that that's right here, uh, originated out on the East Coast, you can find it pretty much made anywhere these days. And not just in the U.S., but around the world as well. Uh, and so once a new style hits or new flavors uh, are introduced to beer, people, uh, brewers around the country and around the world, really flock to that very quickly because the fans demand it. Okay. And so it's sort of this tail wagging the dog in, in some ways of, you know, somebody comes on and says, like, wow, this kiwi beer is really great, and it gets all over the internet. All of a sudden, it's, well, everybody's making kiwi beers now. And so um, it, it, it's cool because there are some times where uh, a local brewery, you know, like here can create something and can go out and, and expand from there. Um, but a lot of the time it's just collaboration and it's brewers talking with each other and saying, hey, have you tried this? Have you tried this? And then cool things fall. So it's more of a fraternity when it comes to the brewers. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, there, there's there's a lot of collaboration that works. I was up at uh, Barntown Brewing yesterday uh, and they had a collaboration with a Chicago brewery called Microphone and it's this imperial raspberry stout. It's like 10% alcohol. Uh, it's thick. It's viscous. It's It's got this really wonderful candied, jellied raspberry fruit flavor to it uh, you know one will one will put you down in your chair but uh, you're gonna order that second one anyway because it's uh, it's it's that, that good. good so yeah mm -hmm. I, I love all the descriptives I'm getting <laughs> this morning. but you take it very seriously as you should sure. with your job and you're talking I want to make sure the beer I'm getting is clean meaning that uh, where it's coming from talking about outside the glass yeah uh, is clean I want you to talk about that a little bit but also the glass itself. You're saying don't just grab a pint glass and throw a beer in there because it makes a difference, right? It, it absolutely does. And so I brought two different styles of glasses. And this this is what you normally see when you're out. This is the you know the standard 16-ounce uh, shaker pint. And we're so used that when we go out and order a beer, we want the 16 ounces. We've paid for it. We've ordered a pint. Like, we want it. But the problem is when you're tasting beer, you want to have the aromas come out as well. And you want to have your nose in there a little like bit. Like a wine? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Really? You know? But if you try to do that when it's a full pint, well, you're going to get a, a wet schnoz. So, uh, you know, it, it, presentation matters when it comes to, to glassware. And you can fill your glass as you go, but something like this really does allow the aromas to come through uh, as, you're, as you're tasting a beer, which is so important. It's like 90% of what we perceive as taste comes from, from, from aroma. True. And so, um, uh, yeah, the glassware matters. Um, and you also want to make sure that you get a clean glass as well. And so... Sometimes you see on TV, and this happens with like uh, you know soda pop and and other uh, type commercials where it's a pint glass or it's a, it's a it's a drinking glass, and there's carbonation stuck to the inside of the glass. So you see the right. bubbles along the inside. Yeah, right. That's dirt. 
that's soap residue, that's soap scum, that is bits of food left over from the dishwasher. Uh, it's any number of things. That's the carbonation uh, that's on hanging on to debris. Yeah, so if you see the carbonation sticking to the side of your glass, and hopefully we clean these before. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, I did, I did you know, notice yeah. something. Really? I want to say something about that because yeah. you sent those glasses to get cleaned, and, yeah. and your instructions were no soap. Yeah, just uh, just strong hot water. Uh, yeah. Just strong hot water. Uh, because, you know, that palm olive, uh, it has sort of that petroleum in it as well. So it's going to, it's a slick that'll stick to the side. Oh, wow. Uh, of your glass. You can get specialty beer cleaners. We talk about that in the book as well. Uh, that are actually just great for household use in your general glasses anyway. But if you see a beer that's served to you that where carbonation is stuck to the inside of the glass, you know, it's fine up at the, the top with the with the foam, but inside the glass, it's like getting a dirty fork at a restaurant. And you're gonna send that back. So <laughs> it's one of those things to just be aware of. Be aware uh, when of you're it. Out. Yeah. All right. Be aware of beer in general. And people can do that by picking up your book, drink beer, think beer, yes. and getting to know uh, every the whole experience besides <laughs> just awesome. the glass. You you also write for a magazine we want to make sure people sure. know about yeah, as well. Yeah, Craft Beer and Brewing Magazine. It's our uh, best of uh, 2018 special issues now on newsstands. And so uh, folks can check that out as well. It's our best picks of the year. And uh, some of our writers and collaborators uh, share their thoughts as well. And there's 7,000 breweries in the country right now. There's a lot to get through. Uh, and there's a lot wow. of beers being made and a lot of cool flavors. And we get to distill it down uh, in every issue. It's That's amazing. And really quickly, if people want to follow along with you, uh, what's the best way to do so? Sure. It's uh, website's johnhall.com. Or you can go to Twitter at John underscore Hall or Instagram Mr. John Hall. Mr. The other one was taken. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Let's be honest about it. There you go. There's a high school kid in Detroit somewhere who has the Instagram. So, it's uh, <laughs> Well, you have one of the coolest jobs ever, and we appreciate you waking up early this morning to talk to Thanks us. Thanks so much for Thank having me. Thank you for here. being here. Yeah. Our buddy. Thank, Thank you. Appreciate Bye. it.